So inspired largely by the allegations against Harvey Weinstein, people on social media are once again having a discussion about sexual assault and sexual harassment against women. And I understand it can be frustrating that we even need to talk about this, especially considering that women have been shouting about it from the mountaintops for literally decades, and also the fact that you shouldn't have to shout at someone to get them to not sexually assault you. But the fact of the matter is that somewhere around 20% of women in the United States has or will experience some form of sexual assault. And by the way, if you dispute that statistic, you're just wrong. You should probably stop watching YouTube shitlords and start reading actual studies. And when we expand beyond assault and include sexual harassment, I don't know the actual numbers on that one, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's near 100%. As most of you likely can attest to after seeing probably every woman you know fill your social media timelines with hashtag me too. So insofar as a large enough quantity of human beings remain the actual fucking worst, I think it's good to have these conversations. And I think they do help even if it seems like they don't. They've helped me throughout the years and I'm sure many others. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. This video was made possible by my amazing Patreons. If you'd like to join the custodial crew and support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash the one janitor. Now I've also seen a lot of men talk about their experiences with sexual harassment and sexual assault. And I think that's a unique issue that we should talk about. And I've talked about men's issues before, but it seems to me that the context of the current discussion is primarily dealing with sexual assault and harassment towards women. So that's what this video is gonna focus on. This is not to say that this is the only issue or even the most important issue, but each subject is unique and requires unique solutions. And I think it's a mistake to try and adopt some one size fits all approach. Now, when we're discussing injustice towards a marginalized group and you're not a part of that group, but you still want to be an ally and be helpful, it can be difficult to determine what's appropriate to do and say in order to avoid making things worse. Now, a lot of women watch my channel, but according to YouTube analytics, my viewers are mostly male. So I want to start a discussion about what men can and should do in response to this dialogue about sexual assault and sexual harassment. And I'm a man, so it's possible that my analysis of this women's issue could be flawed. And if it is, feel free to add on or correct me. So the very first thing that men gotta do in this situation is shut the fuck up. No, seriously, Shut the fuck up. Shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. Or more specifically, know when to shut the fuck up. And honestly, this is advice that a lot of us could generally use in life. Now, I'm not saying you're not allowed to have an opinion or you're not allowed to participate in the conversation, but when women are talking about their experiences and telling their stories, that is not your time to speak. When women are spreading awareness through a social media campaign, that's not your cue to get all defensive or air out your personal concerns. Don't talk over people. They don't need your cynicism. They don't need your devil's advocate. They don't need your whataboutism. There's a time and a place to be a skeptic. This ain't it. It doesn't help, you're being an asshole. These women are going out on a limb to share often very sensitive personal stories. And men need to practice basic compassion and show support for them so they can feel comfortable expressing these very important issues because that's the only way we're ever gonna get a solution. And if women feel like they're gonna be second guessed or talked over every time they bring this up, they're gonna be much more hesitant to do it in the future, which allows the problem to persist. The next thing we need to do, if I may quote one of my favorite favorite rappers of all time, Earl Sweatshirt, is believe women. Yes, listen and believe. But what if I don't have any evidence that what they're saying is true? Okay, to be fair, that little dramatization probably doesn't apply because the target audience of this video is men who actually want to help and that's just not a thing that a person who actually wants to help would say. Like if a stranger runs up to you and says, help, I need help, someone is trying to hurt me, please call the police, you're probably not gonna respond. I'd love to help you, but first show me the evidence that you're telling the truth. Because that's just a shitty thing to do. This isn't a trial. It's not your job to figure out who's innocent and who's guilty. You're not fucking Judge Judy. Unless you are Judge Judy, in which case, Thanks for watching my video, that's awesome. You're just a regular human being listening to the experiences of another human being. And just like I said before, if women feel like they won't be believed, which they often do, then they are unlikely to come forward, and they often don't, and then nothing gets done. Yes, sometimes people lie, but the mere possibility of this happening doesn't justify you being suspicious of any person that makes a claim. Cynicism is not a virtue. Someone should put that on a t-shirt. Oh wait, I forgot, the internet is awesome. And in fact, several 
several studies have shown that false sexual assault allegations are extraordinarily rare. So believing people when they make these claims is actually the rational thing to do. Another thing that men can do is be more assertive in calling out abuse when we see it and when we know about it. I'm not saying that you need to patrol the streets like some kind of anti-harassment avenger. I'm not even saying that you necessarily need to confront anybody, although that may be required. But do something. Say something. Tell somebody. Tell your boss or supervisor or teacher. Call the police if you have to. And if it comes down to it, yeah, you might have to take a stand. If you know that something is going on that's not okay, you might have to come out and say, hey, that's not okay. And it's not always bad, villainous people. Sometimes it's basically decent people who just don't understand the experiences that women face or understand why their behavior could be perceived as abusive. And sometimes we have to be the ones to educate educate them. But sometimes it is bad people who intentionally leverage their physical upper hand or their perceived social value or their relative power and influence to take advantage of women. And since there is often a discrepancy in size or influence, it's essential that men call out other men who are doing this. Because like we've seen with Harvey Weinstein, women can often feel powerless in these situations. So another thing that we can do to help end sexual assault and sexual harassment of women is probably the most direct solution. We can, you know, stop sexually harassing and assaulting women. Now, of course, most of you are not horrible people who spitefully and impulsively take advantage of women. But like I said, a lot of this is due to ignorance and privilege rather than outright malice. A lot of guys truly believe that sexual assault is disgusting, but at the same time, don't fully understand consent. A lot of people mean no harm, but still fail to avoid inappropriate touching or invasions of personal space. A lot of people seriously don't comprehend how catcalling and aggressive flirting can make women feel feel very unsafe. Some people were raised in an environment where objectification of women was the norm. Some people struggle with mental illness or substance abuse, which can lead to harmful behaviors. None of this excuses the actions, of course. The point I'm making is that even people like you and I, who at the end of the day, aren't bad people are capable of harassment and assault because of our ignorance and lack of perspective. And if we have been guilty, it's up to us to acknowledge and admit it and immediately take steps to fix it. I've been guilty of sexual harassment and sexual coercion in my past. I've been sexually inappropriate with women and I've emotionally manipulated women. Owning up to that was a major step in my personal self-improvement and actually was a big part of a major overhaul of my entire life's focus. And I don't think I was a bad person. If you ask 95% of the people who knew me back then, they would say I was a kind, easygoing, friendly person. Because I was, and I still am. I just also happened to be a sex-obsessed idiot who drank too much. And unfortunately, that resulted in improper conduct with the other 5%. And I'm still sex-obsessed, and I still drink too much, but I'm less of an idiot. So if you're a man who wants to help solve this problem, you definitely need to examine your own behavior and make sure you're not acting in a way that makes the whole thing work because that makes women feel less supported. There's way too many cases of men who are supposed allies to women being found to be guilty of some pretty gross stuff. So I have to like walk on eggshells and tiptoe around everything that I say and everything that I do? Yes, it's called being a thoughtful, considerate person. You should go out of your way to avoid fucking up other people's lives. You should want to do that. And I promise you, it's not that hard. Beyond all that, we just have to stay active and informed. Continue listening to people's experiences is stay up to date with the latest research and studies and news on this topic. We should jump at any chance we get to educate ourselves and also support politicians and policy that will protect women. This is obviously not an exhaustive list. There are many, many things that men can do to help and I just wanted to touch on a few of them. Feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below. Unfortunately, because there are so many apathetic, passive and even complicit men in positions of power, women will probably have to take the lead in fixing this problem. They shouldn't have to, but historically that's the only way that anything ever has gotten done. But that struggle is made a little bit easier if we as men support them to the best of our ability. That's just me though. What do you think? So honestly, I mostly make these shirts for myself, but if you wanna buy this shirt, you definitely can do that and it will support the channel, so go for it. Let's check the voicemail. Hey T1J, uh, I love your channel. Um. So in your last video, uh, the voicemail question, you were talking about drug laws and you mentioned that you don't think the purpose of government is to keep people from hurting themselves. 
Uh, and I guess this is kind of like a dark and depressing topic, but do you think that extends to suicide? So I've been to the psych ward on involuntary hold. And in my state, that means I can't own guns for, I think, 10 years. Um, but I've been in a long-standing argument with my friend who also went to the psych ward and also can't own guns. Um, and we disagree about whether those laws are reasonable because they think that um, they're paternalistic and that suicide is an individual choice and it isn't the place of government to intervene in it. So I was just wondering what you think is the place of the law in preventing uh, self-harm and seriously self-destructing destructive behaviors like beyond drug use. Thanks. So this is an interesting topic because it's not just a mental health question, it's a gun question. And I made a video about guns not too long ago. And if I'm not mistaken, this voicemail came in before that video was released. So maybe this person has a little more insight into my views on guns now. So of course, I'm not an expert on mental health issues or the best way to treat or support people with mental health issues. But I certainly believe that from a legal standpoint, a person should have the right to commit suicide. Because just like with drugs, if the only victim is oneself, then I personally don't believe that should be a crime. However, I don't like suicide and I would be happy to see less of it. Like when I'm talking about drugs and how I think they all should be decriminalized, you shouldn't interpret that as me saying, everybody go do heroin, woo! No, people shouldn't do heroin and we should help them and educate them so that they don't do it. But if they decide to anyway, I think that's their right. And it's the same with guns and suicide. I'm not saying, go kill yourself, I don't care. I don't want people to kill themselves. And maybe people who are disproportionately likely to kill themselves, such as people with mental health issues should be handled differently. I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, here's the big difference between drugs and guns that matters to me. Drugs are only directly harmful to the people who use them. Guns are potentially harmful not only to the people who use them, but everybody else around the people who use them. That's the key. And like I said in my guns video, this is backed by statistical data. Having a gun endangers yourself and everyone around you. I'm not sure if that's part of the justification for the laws that you're talking about, but that would be the reason that I would support such a law. But thanks for calling. If you want to ask me a question or make a comment, call the number on your screen and leave me a voicemail. And maybe I'll respond to your message in a video. I make videos about social issues, current events, and pop culture. And I also do a live Q&A stream every Sunday. If that sounds cool to you, please click that subscribe button and also ring that notification bell to make sure you never miss a video or live stream. Thanks again to my beautiful patrons and remember, stay hake up.